Poor Corliss. And <laughs> just poor Corliss Valarian. So episode five of House of the Dragons in the books and quite a few things went down in this episode. And I, let's hopefully I can kind of get through this without making another 30 minute video, right? But I kind of like to talk. I kind of like to get going. But a lot of emotions came back up in this motion in this video because in the last episode, Rhaenys and Maelys died. So Rhaenyra lost a very important council member, very important person in her life. Corlys lost his his wife, his longtime love, someone he's been in love with since he was little. I know we have the stuff with like the the bastard children, but like he did love Rhaenys. Bela and Reyna have lost their grandmother. It, 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 sadness all around on that. They took a huge hit on Rhaenyra's side in terms of the war. Families are hurt. Everyone's hurt. And, and then Rhaenyra said also has lost their biggest and strongest dragon at this point. So it's not looking good for Team Black. But my man Corlys just... <sighs> he's just suffering. This man lost his wife now. But before this, he's lost. He lost his daughter due to pregnancy complications. His son has gone off into the wind. May still be alive, may not be alive. We don't know yet. I know in the books, I think they say he does inevitably die. But right now on the show, it's kind of ambiguous whether he is or not. Who knows at this point in time, and unless they show it or make statements of it, we don't know. But for all he knows, his son could be even dead. To him, he's lost. He's lost everything. He's lost his family. He's lost his house. He's lost, and oh my God, the acting by his by the Corliss act by his actor was top notch in this scene. Just silence and quiet, and the single tear, and ah, oh, what a way to opening up this episode. This sadness all around. Then we jump back over to King's Landing. You have this terrible, you have this super sad, and then you jump over to King's Landing, and the people in the streets, you can tell there's some distress. People are like arguing, discourse. They're upset. We got to hear a little bit about that in the last episode, but then here he comes with stupid ass Kristen Cole parading through the streets with the head of Maylis screaming, this is the traitor dragon. King Aegon took it out, which is another thing. They said Aegon took down Maylis, not Aemond. They want everyone to believe that the king did all right, that the king took down the dragon, which is weird because like later they end up revealing that the queen, the king regent is Aemon. So they're like, what happened to the king? Like they literally bring that up a little bit later in the episode. So them trying to hide something happened to the king doesn't last very long because they end up revealing something pretty much happened to him later. But anyway, you have Kristen Cole in this little group parading him through the streets. He's like, why are they mad? Why are they upset? The people are like, this is a bad omen. This is not good. What have you done? They apparently they also really liked Maylise because she she was one of these dragons that flew around the city a lot. So they kind of respected her and, and looked up to her and rec and loved her. But to them, this is a bad omen. They're like, you killed a dragon. This nope. This is a bad omen. This is not good. Mm -mm, nope. And so Chris was like, why? Why are they acting so? We won. Why? Why are they? How dare they talk to us like that? And Sir Gwen's like, was it really a victory? I mean, you say so. And you see Eamon and his mom up there on top, seeing the little carriage that brought that definitely has Aegon in it. She can just tell there's something up with Eamon with the smirk he's given off. Then we get in Aegon's room and they're starting to remove the armor, starting to remove everything from him. And it's it's a gruesome looking scene. Um I think they say in the books, or for book readers confirming on this one, I think in the books it's it like his damage is a lot worse than obviously what the show kind of showed but it was pretty messed up what it was they're pulling off the arm you can hear it like pulling and tearing on the skin and it was a nasty looking scene and they're like we don't Allison's like is my son gonna live she's like they're like you gotta get up out of here we we gotta get to work and they're like okay so they let her get to work she leaves Amen comes in sees and he pretty much is like We've got to make a decision moving forward in his absence. And we have them over in the council room. They have to decide for the new king. <sighs> Allison's like, I'll step up. I took charge when my husband was sick. I can do this. I'll take over. And the, and the rest of the council is like, yeah, that was during a time of peace. This is a time of war. We need someone better suited for the role. And they all went basically raw like Aemon. It's Aemon across the board. The only one I think that doesn't actually agree with it is the maester. He's the one kind of not wanting it, but everyone else, they're all like, Aemond. They even ask Kristen Cole, like, you're the hand of the king. 
what are you guys saying? He's like, Eamon. So Eamon gets out, walks around the table, sits in a spot, and he starts dishing out orders. And you have this slow zoom in on Allison, and she's basically kind of having what seems like a small panic attack. She's hearing everyone, but the voices are fading out. She's breathing real heavy. She's not happy. And she's not happy because she just seems like there's something up with Eamon. She's like, this... It's like he wanted this. There's like this... She has this feeling. And as the mother, she probably does. She's like, something's off with my boy. He was too eager to jump into this role. Ray, way too ready to set this stuff up. So Allison's basically been pushed aside for Eamon to take over. And Eamon's taking charge completely. He's telling everyone, lock up the walls. No one's leaving. Uh, we're going to start moving forward with the war. Yeah. Uh, in this instance, I'm I'm kind of with Allison on this. Eamon's way too eager for war. And she knows it. And now knowing the truth of what she learned back with her conversation with Rhaenyra, she knows things are about to get much much worse. Speaking of Rhaenyra, over her and the council, her and her council are just going back and forth. They're butting heads. They want to take action. They want to say, we need to see now. We need to take for the Dark Hole and Rook's Rest. We need to jump back into action. And they're like, we lost our best dragon though. So what do we do? And she's back and forth with them. She's not happy that her council's not really talking with her, more so talking at her. So she's frustrated. She feels like she can't get anything in. They're like, what about your husband? Anything? They're all, he's ignoring us. He's over at Heron Hall and doing nothing all because of an argument you two had. So her account is not in disagreements or even pushing her away. It's just like, they're not willing to let her be a part of the conversation entirely. She's there. They hear her, but they're just at this point to where they're not really letting her. And they're like, where is your husband? Where is Damon? What are we doing? Let's go. Come on. Here on. So she's getting frustrated with her own council. Her son, Jaharis, does it? Jaharis, Jaharis, Jaharis. He's frustrated that his, his mom won't let him do anything. He's frustrated that she'll send Bela out to do things. And so he is in the room talking with Bela and he was like, I'm, I'm tired of this. My mom can't keep keeping me trapped in this castle. I need to take care of something. And he is like, let's go. I'm going to go deal with the phrase with the bridge. We have the Starks coming down from the north. If they could get to the bridge and get across even faster, it'd be fantastic. I'm going to go deal with them. And Bela's like, your mom wouldn't agree with him. He's like, don't don't tell her till I'm gone. She finds out. I'm pretty sure Bela tells her. I don't think we, we don't see her say it on screen to her, but it's safe to say that she said something to her. But he leaves to go deal with the phrase. This scene with Bela and Jaceris' actors really done well, by the way. Like, maybe it felt a little stiff in some some sections but not like in a stiff in a way it's like oh bad acting it was just like could have been a little smoother i think it just could have been a little smoother but overall it's still a great scene from the two of them so we have just Ares going off dealing with gonna go deal with the phrase and so we'll get to that damon over at aaron hall is just slowly losing his mind straight up he is trying to have trying to help the lord at heron hall basically start to rebuild and he doesn't want to get in contact with his wife. He's like, I'm going to do this on my own. I don't need her and all of this. They're talking about the funds. And he's like, I, I don't have funds. Just kind of hoping maybe you could talk to your wife. And he's like, nope, I'll do it myself. So they're in the process of rebuilding Heron Hall. But while in the process of rebuilding it, Damon's just basically losing his mind. Again, don't know if it's a curse or who's lingering poison that he's being dealt with. But Alice Rivers is 100% involved in this somehow either she's causing it or she's just aware of it because of her innate abilities i personally don't know either one but i like that she's up on his ass no matter what they have this scene where they're talking and she's fixing up his hand she's telling him like yeah the the war this war that you're waging quote on you know over here it's the women and the children that are suffering it, it it's not going with the way you think you are and all of this terrible setup and while she's bandaging him up she's they get into it a little bit more and he starts walking off and she's like oh yeah and what if what if so what happens when you win he's like Rhaenyra and Damon's like I need Rhaenyra needs my help she does because they are not going to take her seriously as a woman so I need to take charge lead the charge deal with them take it out and when I take over and get to and sit in the Iron Throne. Rhaenyra can sit with me. 
as king, king and queen ruling. Because he's starting to have these visions that are telling him like, hey, you're the one that's fit to be king. You should have been chosen. And this whole dream sequence here. Uh, don't know who this woman's supposed to be, but she says the line's my favorite son. Is that supposed to be his mom? People, uh, book readers, is that something, is that supposed to be his mom? I'm guessing based on the lines, but I don't, don't know who she is. Cause I don't think it's ever shown him and Viserys' parents. I don't think it did. So I'm guessing it's supposed to be his mom, but apparently he doesn't know his mom based on what Al Alice says right here. So he doesn't even know what his mom looks like. And then like this scene where she was like, my favorite son. And he's like, oh, I've seen blood on her neck. And that tripped him up more apparently her saying that. So yeah, Damon's just kind of losing it here. So when Alice is getting on to him and they're having this conversation, telling him like, I have to be the one that leads. I have to be the one that rules. With Renera, they won't take her seriously if I'm not standing there. And then he's like, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And Alice is like, you know, what if you lose? And he goes, well, I lose. Then I die. I ain't got to worry about it anyway. I mean, which is true. It's true. If he dies, he dies. Uh, but that was their their entire argument. And as he's walking away, Alice is like, it's a shame that you didn't know your mother. As if she knew what the dream he just had or the hallucination was about. So, again, that comes back to does Alice, Alice knows stuff, right? Alice knows things <laughs> again is she causing it or is she just because of her own connection she knows what's happening to damon in the castle book readers you can just kind of yes or no on that one as for the war that they were talking about over here just before this scene of them fixing up the castle damon is with the lord blackwell they're dealing with the brackens and they're like bend the knee serve me serve my wife fault you know renounce fealty to the false king aegon the bragging's like i don't care you can do it everyone i'm not serving with the blackwoods so and he and damon's like all right um either bend the knee or die and the bragging's like Psh, light us up let's go and you see this really cool shot of the bracken leader turning around he's walking away as cracks as low as his head down and that was actually a really cool shot super cool shot and then the next shot's followed up with aemon in his full armor and sitting there and he's like i didn't expect them to be willing to die for that huh and like it's it's said in like in a joking manner but also like an impressed manner like he's impressed that they're willing to stand their ground that much but he's also kind of jokingly like i really did not expect that color me shocked hmm. and so the blackwood leader's like we should have just killed him should have he's like no no, no i can't kill him they're there i need men like that that's the type of man i need to help me in this army and the blackwood leader's like yeah they they are pretty tough i i won't deny that so they have their little conversation he's like i need damon's pretty much saying like i need you to do things there's just things that the crown can't do are you like Every man has a weakness. Are you hearing me? And he's like, I'm hearing you. And so they set off to go do some stuff, which inevitably comes back to bite Aemon in the ass later because he is dressed by the river lords of this area. And they're like, yeah, the Blackwoods, they are destroying sacred areas. They're enslaving women and children. They're doing heinous, awful, terrible things. Like, hey, do with, deal with the Bracken guy. We're cool with that. But what they're doing is no go and we wouldn't we're not going to give fealty to a man that would also agree to this type of stuff you know the blackwoods are waving the flag of the targaryen the red dragon on black that's you we know it's you and we're definitely not going to agree to a, work with a man or swear fealty to a man that not only is sanctioning this but also would kill the baby in a bed they was like whoa 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 bring me the man that says that and i'm going to take care of him that's a lie and they're like well it's going to be the whole kingdom half the kingdom then because everyone believes that so damon starts he's pretty much losing it the lords you can see like i don't know if it's something's actually affecting him or he's just whatever it is he's dealing off the one the lords are like yeah no we're not gonna deal with you we're had enough of you and they leave so damon's plan in heron hall is not working out the way he had hoped he he got he took a step forward with the bracken leader agreeing but then he took a step back multiple steps back because the way the blackwoods went about dealing with things cost him more with the people of the riverlands than it did end up helping him so he's not getting any real progress 
with Heron Hall. So now when we move back over and we are dealing with um, Jaceris, he's talking with the phrase on their bridge. What can we do to uh, have you swear fealty to my mother? What, what can I do to help you with that? They're like, yo, it's not that we don't agree with Rhaenyra as queen. We got no beef with that. No beef swearing fealty for that. Because they they said they're afraid mostly of siding one way or another because of Vagar. Jaceris is like, you're afraid of a dragon miles and miles away, and mine's literally right back there. What can I do to help you? And which like, you know, again, they all end up agreeing. They want Heron Hall. She and he's like, well, I'm gonna need a little bit more. They're like, in order, you know, you want access to the bridge, we want Heron Hall. And he's like, okay, but I'm gonna need a little bit more than just access to the bridge if you want Heron Hall when this is said and done. So they're like, you know, what do we want? What do you want from us? And he's like, bend the knee. So they basically come to an agreement. They're pretty much swearing fealty to Renera. And Jaceris did a pretty good job as, you know, putting himself out there to um, help set up things for his mother. Shows that he's more than capable of being in this. He doesn't, he's no longer the coddling prince that needs to be stayed back in the kingdom. He knows what he's doing. He's good at what he's doing. So, you know, that's what needs to be done. So he's shown that he's capable. That's what I'm getting at. We catch back up with Corliss as he's standing on the pier overlooking his castle where his ships are stationed. And Bela comes up and is talking to him. You know, this is her granddad. She's having this conversation. But she comes up to him because, one, to check on him. But also, two, because Rhaenyra asked her to deliver something for him. And it's the hand of the king. And she hands it to her in the last episode when they were talking about Rhaenys and how she was as a younger woman and Bela was like, I wish I could have met her when she was younger. I think she'd have been so cool. I think it's so cool that was able to basically connect with Maylis. Whereas like my dad, it just, it, it that's super pissed off my dad because he wanted it because apparently Maylis was Damon's mother's dragon. Again, I didn't know that. Maybe I missed it in one of the episodes, but apparently Maylis used to belong to Damon and Viserys' mother. Damon wanted Maylis and Maylis did not want him. She chose Rhaenyra, Rhaenys, sorry, Rhaenys, and apparently that upset Damon. So that was a really good scene between them and her, Vale and Rhaenyra laughing about all this. And so when she hands her the box, it's got the little pen because she wants Corliss to be hand of the queen. So Vale is over there talking with him and they have this very, very big emotional moment. And Corliss is just like, I got nothing left. I've lost everything. My home is a tomb. I, I, I don't like it. And Bela's talking to him and she's like, Rhaenyra would like you to be hand of the queen. And she, he's like, oh, this woman doesn't even respect my wife's death. And Bela goes off on him. And she's saying all this stuff to him. And good on her too. Again, great scene between these two actors. Really great scene. And she's telling him like, you, you're not the only one that lost. I lost my grandmother. Rhaenyra lost someone that she looked up to. You're not the only one that lost, but Rhaenyra basically needs you now more than ever. And she's like, but if you don't like, if you don't want to sit with Rhaenyra, if you don't want to have this conversation, whatever, go join Team Grand. I'm sure they'll just love to have you in there. And hey, again, fantastic. Because Bela in this moment is like, I'm not having any crap from you, Grandpa. Stop wallowing in self-pity. Stop being a little whiny person. We understand you're hurt. I am hurt. Rhaenyra's hurt. We're all hurt. We all loved and respected Rhaenys. You're not the only one hurting and she's right she's she's right and corliss needed to hear that she, she he needed to hear his granddaughter stand up stand her ground get on him and she did she did a fantastic job because as she's walking away he's like granddaughter i i would name you heir to my throne to my land and bayless like i appreciate it but i'm fire and blood the throne belongs to salt and sea so she's like saying, I, I can't take it. I'm I'm a Targaryen. I, I can't take your throne. Your throne belongs to someone that is a Valarian or Valer is it Valerian or Valarian? And this is obviously the setup to where he's gonna bring in his two bastard children to probably take over, I'm guessing. That's the setup. Book readers just go like, yeah. That seems like that's the setup moving forward with them. Yeah, but this is a great scene between the two of them. And we move back and so the next shot we see of Corlys, is he's in the throne room. He's looking through, looking at the hand stuff. He's, he's sitting back. He's thinking. He's clearly thinking about what Bayless said. And we see him close his hand 
on the pin. So to me, that's saying he's accepting Rhaenyra's proposal to become hand to her. And I, I hope so, that she's going to need it. She's going to need all the help she can get moving forward and shift back over to Rhaenyra as her and Jaceris are talking. Jaceris has come back. You know, he's like, we're sitting around talking. Oh, Vizinia. And you know, she's like, yeah, Vagar's first writer. It's like, eh, you know, yeah. Well, I don't know where you're going with this. She's like, I'm not going anywhere with this. Then why are you mad? And so they have their conversation. You ran off. You didn't tell me. Blah, blah. And he's like, I needed to do this. And she's like, well, I'm glad you did. And blah, blah, blah. They're having this big discussion. They never lead up. And they inevitably get to them sitting about the shit. And Rhaenyra's just like, I just don't have the manpower right now. Like, the Starks are helping, yes. I, Damon, I need more help with Damon. I need the army that Damon's trying to set up, but he won't talk to me. We could use more. Honestly, we could use more dragons, which has. And then Jaceris is like, what if we find those that are not of our bloodline that married into other houses? She's like, so you want like a Malister or something to ride a dragon? He goes, it's not having someone on there to drive the dragon, which I think that's the setup for the dragon seeds, right? Like that's the clear setup for the dragon seeds. Those that are not targaryen or the mix of the Val valerian that's another thing too um someone explained to me how because i've i found out that one one if not both of corliss's two bastard sons one of them rides a dragon and one of them takes lanor's dragon right yes i think that's what it's like. they take one of they take lanor's dragon so how are they capable of doing it like it's strictly not Targaryen, right? Like I, I've learned that from one of the videos talking about this. Those that used to live in Old Valyria, it's not just Targaryens that can ride dragons. A lot of people used to ride dragons. So the reason why Targaryens are the only ones now is because when Old Valyria fell and the Targaryens left sooner, they're basically the only bloodline left of that old world that could ride dragons. So that's why they can ride dragons. And it makes sense that those of Targaryen blood can ride dragon because Corlys doesn't ride a dragon. So he clearly doesn't have the blood of a dragon lord to ride a dragon. Or he just never claimed one. One of the two. Either either he can't or he just never attempted to. Again, book readers, let me know. So if that's the case, is that the same way with his children? Like, they're capable because he's capable? Or is it just something they're going to end up rewriting for the show? Like, I, I just I kind of don't, again, that someone want to properly explain to me how Corliss is bastard sons are able to ride dragons if they're not tied to a bloodline that could ride a dragon again if corliss chooses he's if corliss can because somewhere in his blood he's able to ride a dragon he's just never chosen to ride a dragon okay but if corliss's bloodline isn't able to ride a dragon how are his bastard son's able to ride a dragon you know what i'm saying uh, jaceris and rhaenyra rhaenyra talking about it and she's like man that's a huge undertaking and he's like well we sh still a possibility right she's like we actually yeah we have a whole family dialogue that i could comb through and possibly find it so we end the episode with him with the setup of the dragon seeds and them going out and finding other writers that inevitably will hopefully join her to go ride dragons for her which again i've heard so tiktok that definitely happens and some other things go down but this episode so i'm in this episode this episode is again i haven't rated the other ones but this episode was absolutely like an eight eight and yeah eight out of ten on the scale of this one uh there may have been some moments of little stiffness with some of the acting that's again that's not a negativity it's just there was just a little stiffness but i think all the actors are doing a great job corliss's actor was amazing in this episode i i all the way for this that opening the opening scene with him in the throne room and the crying absolutely fantastic everything sing, being set up the, you finally see the fact that Alicent's going god what have I truly gotten into you just see it wash all over she's like yep I've allowed this to take in motion now again I know people point out like it wouldn't have mattered if Alicent knew the truth or not unfortunately they were going to try auto was going to set up his son and his grandson while that may be true uh it's interesting to think of how the situation could have played out differently if allison knew the actual truth like the story the song of ice and fire and all that with the prince to come 
no, like, what happens, why would what happen if she'd have known that going into it, and then they still usurped her? Like, would Allison have been this adamant with her children, or would she have been trying to find a way with Renera to fix the right or wrong? You know what I mean? Just kind of curious to see what that would have went. But this episode was a great episode. I love this setup. I know that we had to took a step back from the action, per se. This was, again, back to more of the dialogue, but th this stuff was needed, because... The king is down. You have a new regent. Rhaenyra's feel like I got nothing left. I uh, I need help. I need more help. I lost someone really important to me. I need help, which you know, Corlys being hand. That's right. Damon. Damon's over here losing his mind. So is he gonna pull himself together and start helping Rhaenyra correctly, or is he just kind of kind of lose it for the rest of this? Who knows? No. Anyway, fantastic episode. Eight out of ten. A little stiffness here and there, but I think overall still a fantastic episode. Looking forward to next week's episode for sure. And oh my god. Huge, huge praise to the actor that plays Corliss in this episode. I think every scene he was in was top notch. And I look forward to seeing what his character can do for Team Black moving forward. I'm still team black. I don't think I'm ever going to go team green. Even though my favorite color is green, I'm not going to be team green. They're all morons. Rhaenyra is right. She has a viable claim to the throne. She should have been given the throne. She at least tried to not start a war like this, but definitely it ended up being this way. So I'm still team black, still team Rhaenyra, and can't wait for next week's episode. Oh, also, fuck Kristen Cole. That slimy nasty disgusting vile petty man child of a human being fuck Kristen cole <laughs>